What's going on YouTube? Uh, today we're going to talk about whether you should buy an SX Mule, Kawasaki, or maybe go for something like the XUV Gator. Uh, this is just my opinion. I've worked with a small fleet of these guys for a little over six years now, and we've used various style Gators, and we've used mostly the 610s and SX Mules. Um, we have a 4010 mule and a 4000 mule as well, which both of those are fuel injected. And I'll talk about those in a little bit as well. Um, but if you're torn between these two particular models, this size, this price range, because they're similarly priced, um, I'll tell you my opinion. <clears throat> First off, I'm going to go through each cart, talk about some pros and cons with it. Um, I'll tell you what tires that I personally like on them too. Um, but after six years of driving these on mostly asphalt and... Uh, various pavements yeah, we do a little bit off-roading sometimes we get have to get in the muck or go into the woods or you know haul stuff out not very often so um we like a tire that's friendly on the grass and uh one that's decent on pavement so i'll talk about those two a little bit um if you just want me to get to the point i'm going to tell you the winner right now is the xuv and um i'll cover why um <clears throat> but if you just want to watch the first minute and a half of this and for me to tell you I'd have the XUV over all these but here we go I'll go into this and I'm gonna start with the mules <clears throat> um, this one here is a 610 mule um, it's a few years old now it's got some it's got some time on it it's beat up the seats torn um, God, my hand is shaking uh, this one's got so oh, this one's got 1500 hours on it 1563 hours um, it, it's been around the block a little bit. It's not super old. We put a lot of time on these things and constant up and into our facility. We're a maintenance facility here. Um, see all these carts are full of tools, vice, you know, things you would normally do to maintenance. Uh, here's a salt spreader that we've rigged up from an old pickup truck salt spreader that was broken. Uh, we made a <laughs> little trailer out of it and, um, fashioned a battery to it and ran a controller it works pretty good for our site. Um, I actually like that a lot, and we have a full-size truck with a real salt spreader in it, and I prefer that thing for our tight spaces. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> here's a SX Mule, and they pretty much just changed the name from the 610 to the SX. I have no idea why. I'm going to say some things in this video that um, I don't 100% haven't, I haven't fact-checked any of them, so I don't know. Um, the differences between the two that I notice off the bat is um, it's, it's a little more modern styling. The front end looks cool on it. You know, you get these fancy lights. It's got a high and low beam. That other one doesn't. It has rocker switches for the light instead of just a push button. Uh, the steering wheel tilts on it. Mm. <clears throat> just random little things. A little headache rack here. You need to fasten stuff. Um, my opinions on this cart um, for the things we do with it, um, if I was going to have it for a small farm, um, hauling lumber or, or firewood or, you know, anything that you would normally use these for, not a bad choice. It's Kawasaki. It's a name brand, a big name brand, and they make a good product. It's really good. <clears throat> I already said that I prefer the, the deer, and I'm not a John Deere nut. Um, I don't, I don't care. I'm actually looking to buy a couple farm all tractors for my house, so... <laughs> Um, if there's any farm all guys out, out there who hate the green, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't really care about the brand so much. I just like it more. Um, and again, I'll go over that. So the mule, oh, the other difference between the SX and the 610 is they changed the front tire size. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if you can tell, but this tire, eh, you can't see it's a little dark. This, this wheel is narrower than the one in the back. <clears throat> For a place like us that has a bunch of these, and we run them all over the place, and we keep spare wheels and tires on the shelf for quick swap outs, that's kind of annoying, right? Because your front left blows out, and you just want to grab a, a wheel out of the stock we have up on the shelf and throw it on there. Well, now you got to find the skinny one to go on here. Um, it might be because, you know, for turning angle, not turning angles, but, you know, less tire wear um, for turning on it. Um, the suspensions aren't super beefy in these. If a 200-pound guy sits on this, the cart lists on one side. And this one, it's got this diamond plate 
toolbox that was fabbed up on it and a ladder rack and it's got a bunch of tools in the bed and I don't know if you can tell in the video but it's got some rake to it I mean it's squatting in the back there's some weight back there and this isn't my car this isn't the one I drive and as a maintainer that's obnoxious to me um, it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way but yeah this is the tools that this guy needed to complete his job and it's none of my business but I have mechanical sympathy so <laughs> um, <clears throat> what else all steel, everything steel, steel frame, steel floor, uh, the bed is steel. Um, we got ours with these plastic liners from the factory. Um, they're all right, they're not bad. The beds are heavy. If you've gotta do any major um, overhauls with them, any, you wanna change clutches or belt, brakes, or is getting worn out, sometimes it's nice to take the bed off, you don't have to. Um, <clears throat> even with an empty bed, with all this crap on it, it is very heavy still. It's a two-man operation. Um, unless you've got some sort of crane, you know, system in your shop, whatever, you can just pick it uh, or something convenient for you. Uh, what else? It's... I don't know. It's not bad. It's not a bad cart. They haul a fair amount of weight, and um, this is Michigan, where I'm at. Um, it's, it's currently Christmas Day. I pulled the short straw today, so uh, I'm here working. And <laughs> um, these things see um, extreme cold temperatures, and it does get into the 90s here in Michigan as well. And we get a fair amount of humidity as well in the summer, albeit it's not for very long. Most of our months are um, cold or fairly temperate in the summer. But... So they do see some, some temperature changes, and I've never noticed that to be a factor. Um, the motors on these, on all of them, uh, I think we have five or eh, four or five six tens, or SXs, both models, and um, you almost have to pull the choke on these to start them every time, um, unless you've just been running it and it's warm. I don't know why that is. Um, most people will probably tell you that all these motors are made in the same factory by the same company and that they're all identical Kawasaki motors, even in the John Deere's. I have no idea. Um, they are all pretty much the same. But I know I can go over to that gator over there and turn the key right now and it'll fire immediately. <clears throat> this is, it's a little long-winded on the starter and they're all kind of like that. Um, the 4010. Yeah, this is... This is a workhorse. It, it is a powerhouse um, compared to these. You know, it's not a 40, 60 mile an hour side by side. It's not, these are not, none of these are going to be like that. These are all 20, 24 mile an hour carts, you know. So, but compared to this, this is great. It hauls more, it's got a larger towing capacity, and the bed is huge, which is phenomenal for some of the stuff we do, which is why there's nothing in it. We leave it empty um, as much as we can. For in case one of the guys needs, you know, say like this guy who doesn't have a bed because he ruined it, <laughs> um, needs needs a big bed to haul some stuff, he can trade one of the other dudes out for this and uh, go, go take care of the job he needs to get done. And it's really handy. Um, what I don't like about this cart is um, there's two things and I'm kind of blocked off here. One is it's fuel injected and out of the two carts we've had, all of our carts are gasoline by the way, we don't have any of the diesels. Um, out of the two fuel injected ones we've had, we have this one and we have a newer 4,000 mule, which is identical to this, except it doesn't have a uh, four wheel drive and it doesn't have lockers. Um, but otherwise it's pretty much exactly the same. And we've had problems with the, uh, fuel injection right out of the gate on both of them. Um, the 4,000 overheats constantly and we can't figure out why, um, me and the other guy that works on these have pulled apart the um, uh, cooling system pretty much from end to end. We have it brought back to the dealership. They pressure tested it. It keeps getting air in the cooling system. We don't know why. I don't know. So that one is that one's in a different shop next door. Um, I just the fuel injected ones just suck from the two that I've had to experience with. Um, versus all these other carbureted motors. They're, I just, I don't know why it is. They just suck. But this one has been running for us for about two years 
almost flawlessly, which I hate to jinx it, but has been a godsend because the first four years we had it, it's just been a nightmare. Um, the other thing that sucks on these is the shifter is steel, and then this plate here where the gates are is all steel as well. And they do rub when you slide them around, and they will rub through one another. Uh, this is way larger than it normally is from the factory, and this gets grooved out a lot. We've actually been through uh, two of these, I think, now, because um, they get slotted out, and it, it, it just isn't good, and it'll pop out of gear, grinds gears. It's usually not very happy to go into gear anyway. Just, I don't know. Some of it's a bit of abuse. Um, we do have... This car did see a lot of abuse its first few years because it was in a different department where we hire a lot of college kids in for the summer season. And you can just imagine how that goes. They don't care. They're here for the summer. They beat the snot out of these. I pile four of them in here and go flying across the facility, you know, and jumping curbs and crap. So it did get beat up pretty heavily. Uh, nothing that I think would relate to any fuels issues or uh, fuel injection issues or any other things motor-wise. But, um, yeah, it, it's been beat up. It's still a great car. It's still a good car. I don't know what we paid for this. I don't know what the price of these are. Um, but not a bad ride. The comparison to this, which I don't have in the shop right now. Um, we're doing some remodeling and moving stuff around. So we had to move a bunch of our carts to our other warehouse. But if I, if, if I wanted a John Deere version of this kind of thing that was carbureted, and really the only comparison to the two is probably the bed size. If I wanted that big bed, I'd get a TX Gator. Um, we've had a few of them. We have one left. We traded two that got beat up by college kids in for an HPX Gator, which is also next door. And uh, we bought that, oh, uh, it's 2020 now. We bought that in 2016, and it had a bunch of hours on it already. And I think it is a 2016 as well. I, I think it was the same year cart. Um, but that thing's been flawless. We've had no issues with it at all. Just your normal starter and battery belt changes, you know, no big deal. That thing's a trooper. And I think it's the, f <laughs> as far as top speed goes, it's the fastest one out of all these carts. And it, it's got a good towing capacity too. It came with a welded on one inch hitch, which is kind of annoying. Um, most of the, the, the Kawasaki's, this one's welded on as well from Kawasaki, but that's a two inch hitch, which is nice to have. I mean, who's rolling around their farm with one-inch hitches? Nobody. Um, <clears throat> these all, the 610s and the SXs don't come with them um, all the time. It's an option to get a hitch, but they just bolt up right here, and you get a two-inch hitch on them. Um, this one doesn't have it on there, but we do have some with them, and we use them, and they work great for hauling uh, trailers and things with well, an inch and seven-eighths ball. No big deal. Um, if I had to buy something like this for my personal use with my own money, um, I wouldn't do it um, unless they made a carbureted version of that. I just, the issues we had with it were just, and I call it a coincidence, say it was a small pot because we only have two of them versus all these other carbureted motors, but that thing was just it, troublesome um, for us constantly. Um, <clears throat> The 610s and the SXs, just a year difference here um, between the names. Great carts. They work great. They're they're good. They're good at what they do. Um, this will rot out. The bed is is metal. Um, I think I've already said that. <laughs> uh, we did have one one year. It was pretty old. It had something like 2,500 hours on it, and the steel uh, square frame under here. Um, had rusted right through um, a lot of salt here in Michigan <clears throat> and this had snapped right here and we used the ratchet strap <laughs> ran it around there and ran it up here to the roll bar on the roof and we drove it around like that for six months until we convinced the finance department that it wasn't safe and they needed to give us money to buy this SX which they did eventually um, <clears throat> windshields um, this one's been modified obviously this is a, is a Kawasaki windshield. I do believe it came with the cart. You will pay extra for this. 
Um, they're not cheap for any brand that I've seen so far. Same with the roof. Uh, with the with the 4010, we made this windshield and we bought this roof off Amazon and it's been great. It was substantially cheaper than buying one from the dealer and just slapping it on there and cutting a piece of uh, plastic to fit on there is no big deal either. And we did that on this this XUV Gator as well, um, which you know saves you a little bit of cash down the road. And, you're not giving it all to the dealership. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of some more pros and cons. I don't have enough good things to say about these. Um, I, I just can't say enough, really. I mean, it's it's a great card. It's a it's a big name brand. You get what you pay for, um, which is a decent product. The Gator. <clears throat> I use this one on a daily basis. This is my card now. You might say that I'm biased. Maybe. Um, as the the mechanic here at the shop, we needed an, another cart. It was up to me to go source um, a cart for the money we had that was budgeted and report back to my boss. This is the one that I picked out of the whole crowd. And here's a big winner here that you don't normally find with John Deere. This was a thousand dollars cheaper than that SX back there. A thousand dollars for a John Deere. When have you ever heard that? <laughs> I don't know. This is the XUV 560. Um, this is about as base model as they come. It's got the regular old steel wheels in it, none of the fancy five spoke stuff. Um, they make a, other versions of this cart, they're a little rowdier. You can get a four seater that probably goes 110. I don't know. It looks all, all gnarly and they're expensive, but. This thing, I think we paid seven grand for it, and the mules we paid eight thousand for. I believe I could be wrong on that. <clears throat> um, pros and cons for this cart: uh, I had a shifter cable snap in the first year. Don't know why. Thought that was really weird. It was under warranty. Shop took care of it for us. Um, so we just dropped it off, and and they swapped it out for us, which was really nice of them. And. Um, it's been fine ever since. We've had this for two, three years, and it's got oh, a little under 600 hours on it. Um, runs like a top. Um, it's been sitting in the shop now for about an hour. We keep it 65 degrees in here. I was doing a little salting with it earlier this morning, so it is warmed up. But I can come in first thing in the morning and not even touch this choke right here and just, just a real quick and it fires up every time. <clears throat> Maybe that's not a big deal with some people, but I think it's cool. It's, it, it just seems reliability to me. Um, I don't know. It's got a three-way adjustable suspension on all four corners. I've never needed to adjust it. I don't know why you would for the things that I we do around here. Um, I, we just leave it in the middle setting and it's fine. It's far more comfortable to drive than those. Um, as far as suspension goes, it glides over the bumps compared to these. And these things aren't bad. They're not terrible. They ride like like a little side-by-side, -side, like you would expect them to. But this John Deere suspension on here um, takes the cake for sure. Um, if you're seeing this thing in the background, just ignore that. If, if you see one of these Columbia Mega Cards for sale, ignore it. Don't buy it. It's electric. I don't care if you live in Florida and this is the hot commodity down there. Those things suck. Parts are expensive and they're hard to find. <laughs> uh, another perk about the XUV, the bed is all plastic and aluminum. There's nothing to rust out here. And it is substantially lighter. Um, there's two cotter pins underneath. You pull those and you slide the pins out for the bed. Bed comes right off. I'd probably still do a two-man lift. It is awkward. Um, even though it is a substantially lighter bed than that. And I suspect that because this is not steel, um, it is why it has a higher hauling and towing capacity than the 610s. Um, I, I don't know if that's exactly why, but this has got to weigh a lot less than those. And um, You're going to want to take this off if you're doing any big work on this because a downside to this bed tilt on this I'm not going to lift it up. It just comes up right here with a handle. You pick it up, it unlocks on its own. Um, 
The downside to it is it only tilts to, oh, I'll say about right there, which doesn't leave you a lot of room to do anything more than oil changes. And um, so, it, it, you know, we haven't, it's pretty new still. It's only got 600 hours on it or less than that. So we haven't had to change any belts or anything like that, any clutches, no, nothing major. And hopefully we won't have to do that for a while. But when we do, we're going to have to pull that bed off. It's just, there's no room under there to do anything. Um, <clears throat> It is a torquey beast. <laughs> um, when you put your foot on the, the throttle to inch forward, if if I was just trying to cover this gap from here to here, if I wanted to butt it up to the garage door to make more room behind me, um, you're, you're going to want to do it very gingerly. It wants to, on this smooth concrete, it wants to rotate that tire a little bit before it moves. And the mules are much softer. They, they take a little bit more throttle to get going, and they just kind of glide right out. And you can probably... Um, you can probably blame that on whatever clutch systems they use for these CVTs in here. And is it a problem? No. Some of the other guys that work here, when they jump in my car to move it, they hate it because they're afraid they're going to run into everything because it just takes right off. I'm used to it. You just kind of got to blip the throttle a little bit and get her rolling, and then she she's can she's easily to uh, controllable. <clears throat> uh, what else? Oh, um, tire sizes front and back on this are different as well, just like the SX mules. Again, don't know why. I assume it's because of the um, turn, the constant turning on the front wears the wider tires out. I assume that's why. And there's no power steering in any of these except for the 4010, and it probably doesn't even need it. Um, I will say this. When buying tires, we've always gone with this Carlisle, what is this, uh, All Trail 2. Carlisle All Trail 2. Great tire. It has worked well for us. It has not tore up the grass. They don't tear up the grass very much. Um, we don't ever get stuck in the snow with these. All these have four-wheel drive in here and with lockers. Um, we never get stuck in the snow with these. They perform phenomenally. However, <clears throat> this Gator came with these Terra Hawk ATs. It says CST here. I don't know if that's the name brand. I've never heard of them. Never bought them. Um, this has 500 hours on it. I wonder if I can get a good comparison here. This, this has a ton of tread life in it for 500 hours. We're on asphalt constantly. Like I said before, we do very little off-roading. Ton, ton of tread. Doesn't tear the grass up at all. Um, this is a gnarly tire that we bought because we needed one in a pinch and we just got a matching pair of them to throw on here um let's see how many hours does this guy have okay this is 478 hours on it and i feel like we've replaced these tires although they don't look bad i feel like god i can't remember we have so many of them that's a different tread this is the original tire that came up okay so we've this is the original tire that came on this particular cart um we've replaced one on there and I think both the fronts are the same but you can see well maybe you can't see you can't see it all it is worn down a lot more compared to these other ones that are on the gator and when we start swapping tires again the next time we have to do tire swaps I think yeah the CST Terra Hawk AT I think um, if I can find that brand tire in these sizes that'll fit these mules, I'm definitely going that route. I don't know what they cost. I haven't looked into it yet. haven't had to purchase them. And again, I've been more than happy with the Carlisles. They've been a great tire. But just from what I'm seeing on wear on this cart versus these carts, mm, these seem to be the route to go, at least in my opinion. Uh, let's see, what else? Ups and downs. Oh, the... We bought the cart with the roof on it. This is a John Deere roof. It's made for this. It is nice, um, albeit I've never had a reason to take it off. They they just unclip, and you could just pull it off. There's four clips on it. comes right off. I've never had a reason to. Um, I made my own windshield out of some quarter-inch plexi on this. Um, Zip-tied top and bottom just because I ran out of these clamps. But it's been like that for a couple years now, and I haven't needed it to be anything more than that. Um, this does have nice headlights. Looks good in the dark. 
works fine. Doesn't have high beams like the SXs do. And I don't really think you need it. If, if you really wanted more light than that, you could mount a light bar to them. And you can get cheapy ones for something like this. You don't need to get real crazy with them. Uh, I don't think I have much more to say on it. Again, I like this. Um, it's probably the second fastest cart we have. It, according to the manual, it tops out at 24. It gets there a hell of a lot quicker than all these other ones. Um, so I believe the torque is a lot higher. Um, I don't know that. I'm just speculating. The bed is plastic and aluminum. It's lightweight. won't rot out, um, which is why I don't care about leaving bags of salt in it overnight until the next day. There are steel fasteners in here, but those can be replaced. Um, and it's four-wheel drive. It has lockers. Um, it's just an all-around great cart. And if I had to choose between the 610 or the SX and an XUV, I'd get the XUV every single time. I hope you guys liked the video. Sorry, there's not a lot of fancy editing and stuff. I don't do YouTube stuff. Uh, I just thought that with my experience with these, maybe I could help somebody out make um, a decision that's right for them. In the end, if it's going to be your cart to putt around your house in Florida or um, just the property, if you got a lot of property and you're just doing stuff like hauling lumber and things like that back and forth, either cart will do you just fine. I just think the XUV, you get better bang for your buck. In our case, we got it for $1,000 cheaper than we did the Mule. Um, from and These are prices from two different dealers. One's a Kawasaki and motorcycle dealer. The other is a John Deere dealer. Um, <clears throat> so, again, finding stuff that says John Deere on it is uh, for cheaper than anything else is usually uh, rare <laughs> in, my, so, in my few experiences. But, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.